Good morning, everybody, and happy game day. It's our third straight home game as we face off against the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes up the Turner Turnpike, our other D1 in-state school for the first time since 2015, as well as in 2014 when we last played them actually in their home um, in their stadium. So it's been an actual hot minute since we played them in Tulsa, almost a decade. This is also the final team we face this year in our non-conference schedule. Side note, if you didn't get the joke, yes, I'm fully aware that it's our first away game, but I'm also aware that it's only about two hours from Norman to Tulsa, and the stadium's going to be very, very, very much heavy OU contingency. It's funny because a couple weeks back, Tulsa was celebrating that they sold out when it's probably most likely going to be a sea of crimson and cream. So let's delve a little bit into this game. Uh, Tulsa is a very, very run-oriented team, similar to other G5s. They're also very, very dependent on the transfer portal to uh, make up some areas of concern for them. Tulsa has some issues at quarterback right now due to their starter getting injured in the first game and hasn't played since. They've had some rotation for it, um, but as a result, they really haven't settled in at quarterback, as well as all their wide receivers being extremely young. Again, shaky quarterback with a very, very <laughs> uh, shaky wide receiver room means they are going to lean on that run. And even if they surprise us with the quarterback uh, starting, again, he hasn't played since the first game, and he's nowhere near as talented as Stone was last week versus SMU. He won't be able to make up that difference that quickly for that. But again, Tulsa is no slouch at the running game, despite not translating yards into points. Ford and Watkins both are solid rushers for the AAC, and that should be something that should be a red flag for OU is to just stack the box and dare the quarterback to throw it. However, speaking of the run game, we could talk about ourselves as well as even though Deep down, I think we all know Marcus Major is going to be the starter for this game. You got to start putting the best guys on the field. At some point, Barnes and Sawchuck need to step on the field, as well as some of the wide receivers, such as Nick Anderson. Um, you just you need to get ready for conference play. You got to get those guys some meaningful snaps at this point, even if they've been starters and stuff before. There's not really a lot, again, to talk about for their defense and stuff, though, because their defense is not very, very, very good. There's not really anything to highlight. Yeah, they have a couple of classmen, um, upperclassmen, but other than that, it's a lot of grad transfer, a lot of areas. It's just not a good defense for it. Um, again, leading back to OU, we should be able to take advantage of a very lousy Tulsa team who we've played better of in the past before by putting this game away at halftime and rotating our two and three deep guys to get them quality snaps. Again, Tulsa is more an Arkansas State team, even though it's an away game, uh, versus an SMU. You know they're going to run the ball, again, as I mentioned before. Can we have some more pressure at the line of scrimmage and get us some actual sacks? It seems like opponents are definitely trying to stop us with, I believe, the max press. But And while that's effective in stopping sacks, it doesn't let us get to the QB. We ha uh, handled SMU last week against the run, so I would like us to see us, though, handle it again in the exact same way. But really, really lean into our talent and do more pushing them around and throwing them around this week, similar to Arkansas State. I've said it since week one, and I'll continue to say it as well. Let's find our anchors on the offense. Last week, we did not find our anchors. We're getting close to conference play. We really need to have a rally guy, whether it's Anthony, whether it's Gavin Freeman, whether it's Nick Anderson, Gavin Sawchuk, whoever. We need to find that linchpin that we can fall back on and they can be a vocal leader for the offense. Again, against an opponent like Tulsa, I like to see the wide receiver room get some looks. Tulsa is terrible at defending the pass game. I don't expect it to be a complicated game, but I hope that OU does open it up just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit, to get the receivers some, receive, um, some quality snaps as well. Again, of course, same as week one. Don't play down to your opponent. They're going, OU is obviously very blatantly going to keep it very vanilla. Again, sure, but don't make it a liability. Don't make it something that is going to be a red flag. Final prediction I got for this game is OU is 56, Tulsa 14. OU dominates this overall series 20 to 7, and similar to the outcomes in 2009 and 2011, which ones I attended back as an undergrad, one of the two. It's not going to change that outcome today. OU is going to go up 21-7 overall in the series. 
barring some complete meltdown and disaster, of course. The last time they beat us was like 1996. Keep that in mind. 1996, the beginning of a three-year horrible stretch for OU. Before that, 1943. Again, Tulsa doesn't beat us very often because Tulsa usually does not have the quality talent to do that. Tulsa is a very bad team this year, so and it's already early in the season, but we're already seeing that based on who has thrown points on them, especially what Washington did to them last week. OU should be able to do what they want at will and name the score, essentially. Remember, we play Tulsa out of obligation, not because we have to for it. So we play them at least twice every decade. Um, I'm betting again, also just throwing this out there, I do bet we see some frustrations as I don't see us opening the playbook up similar to last week's struggles against SMU. Um, what with the talent mismatch and not really needing to rely on the passing game or open the playbook, but, uh, as well as really probably most likely game planning for our true road opponent next week, uh, Cincinnati and opening up Big 12 final opening up Big 12 play. We will definitely cover the spread. And I think, again, keeping Tulsa under 20 points, we just have too much talent on the defensive side of the ball. And as long as we exert our will, we should be able to take care of business, maybe get to the quarterback a couple times. That in mind, I do think this will be the last week of them running and do, or doing running and receiving committees. Anyway, expect OU to extend the winning streak to 11. Um, that's all I have. There's not really a whole lot to discuss, guys. So comment, rate, subscribe, like, hit the uh, bell so you know when I upload a video. Be sure to spread uh, the channel, the word of the channel to everybody. I like seeing subscribers go up. I like seeing people view the content. It encourages me to make more videos. Watch some of the older videos, guys. It's great background noise. And again, Boomer Sooner, guys, only one Oklahoma. Everybody who's in Oklahoma traveling up to the game or the rare treat for the Tulsa people who get to enjoy OU in person. I hope you have a fun time. I'll see everybody in the post-game review. Later.